Okay, before we do a non-parametric test, I'm just going to clean up these labels a little bit here. I'm just going to put the, the study group in by itself because we've got the value labels in, we don't really need that in here. And down here, I'm actually going to delete these because I don't want them and they're cluttering it up. Uh, don't need all of that, I'm just going to say attractiveness score before. Now there's one other thing that we're going to have to do, although we're treating this as an ordinal variable and this is really um, poor performance on part of SPSS and we're going to do a test which is suitable for ordinal data, it, SPSS will actually not calculate it if it's coded as ordinal. It used to in the legacy dialogues but now it has to be put as scale. So if you have some data which is ordinal like a Likert scale or um, this one here on a scale of 1 to 10 and you're going to do a non-parametric test on it, you're going to have to put it in a scale instead of as ordinal, which is unfortunate. Now before we do the test, we'll just quickly do a graph to see what the data looks like. So if I go into the legacy dialogues, just so I can get the dot plots stacked um, on top of each other, scatter dot, simple, define, now I already put this in before, so I'll just pop, pop it in again. Attractiveness before, it hasn't updated that to the new label actually. Let's see if it does it. And the study group, okay. So it's given me the plot, it's changed these labels here, and this is much simpler than it was before. For some reason it's done them all backwards so I don't think it's actually changed them to scale yet. Let me just click out of that and do it again. Graphs Legacy. Reset, maybe that will do it. Okay, now it's popping up. I was just looking for that icon to change. Attractiveness and study group. Okay, now we have it from 1 to 7. If we were showing this data and we knew it was on a scale of 1 to 10, we might want to have the whole scale 1 to 10 on the graph just so we could see exactly where the data was sitting. If you double click into the graph to open up the editor and then double click right on one of these uh, x-axis labels here and you'll see that they get highlighted in yellow. Uh, and go to scale and we can go to a maximum of 10. And I might start that at 0 because we're getting funny labels there. Apply. That's better. So now from the graph we can see that everyone ranked themselves fairly lowly on um, overall. We didn't have anyone saying they were above a 6.5. And, uh, and we're looking to see is the attractiveness score the same approximately in both the groups before the study? And we might want to do this to check for confounding. If one of the groups happened to be feeling a lot more attractive than the other group for whatever reason, then that would impact on the results if all the attractive people happen to be, say, in the intervention group or in the control group. So in order to check for confounding, we might look at something like this that happened before the study happened, took place. And that's why I don't need the rest of those rows in the data at the moment, I just need the pre-attractiveness score. So to test these scores, we're going to treat them as ordinal and we're going to do a non-parametric test. Um, it's possible you could treat it as continuous and do a, an independent t-test, however the data most certainly does not look normal and I don't think it comes from a normal distribution. So I don't think it's going to meet the criteria for an independent samples t-test. So the the non-parametric version of the independent samples t-test we can do with the Man whitney u-test. If we go to analyze and the non-parametric tests, what we're after is the independent samples because we've got two separate groups. We've got the intervention group and the control group. These are independent of each other and we want to compare their distributions. If we go first to the objective, just leave it on the top one, the default, automatically compare distributions across groups. If you get more into non-parametric testing, you might look at 
the details of the test and how you can use it to compare medians um, or do a custom analysis. But just for the basic, basic test, we just want to see if the two distributions are the same. And the null hypothesis will be that the n these distributions are the same. If we go into fields, we can put in our attractiveness score before, which I already have in there. So that's the variable that we want to test. And then our two groups are from our study groups. And then click Run. And we see here that we actually get a completely different output for the non-parametric test than we get for all the other tests, as if they've been coded up by a completely different group of people. So we get the hypothesis, hypothesis test summary. It tells us what the null hypothesis is, so we don't have to work it out. The distribution of attractiveness score before is the same across the categories of study group. So it's saying that the distribution of these scores is the same between the control group and the intervention group. The test is doing is the independent samples Man Whitney U test. Now we didn't even have to choose that. As long as we went through the right path and said that we wanted independent samples and then that we were comparing distributions, it will just choose the, the test for us. We don't have to say exactly which test we want. We've got a really high p-value and our decision is to retain the null hypothesis. So we would say that we have no evidence to reject the null hypothesis, therefore we can assume that the attractiveness was the same in both the groups before the study and therefore there is no evidence that there is any confounding in the study. If we double click into this box, it gives us even more output which it doesn't do for the t-test or the ANOVA or anything else that we've looked at. And this is really quite nice, this. So it gives us a little graph here. And we can see here that there's, you know, they're not exactly the same, but you know they cover the same range and they're peaking at about the same point. So they do look approximately the same. Uh, it gives us some more details here about the different tests it's done. Our p-value at the bottom and we've got our um, decision over here. So the independent samples Man Whitney U test is similar to your independent t-test and you would use it if your samples do not meet the assumptions for a t-test which is what you would do on continuous data or if you have ordinal data which is what we've got in this case. There are a lot of times where people treat ordinal data as if it was continuous and the tests are fairly robust and if they, they come from normal distributions and you've got large samples that's usually okay. In this case the attractiveness score does not look normal um, and so I think treating it as ordinal data and doing the non-parametric test is probably a better way to go.